Welcome to the Outlandish Comparison. I'm Cinda, and if you don't remember, I had done these videos a few years back where I compared the Outlander TV series to a Dragonfly in Amber. That would have been season two. So uh, I've been focusing on my health the last couple years, and I'm starting to feel better. I've been focusing on my diet, so I'm bringing these videos back for Outlander Season 5, and who knows, maybe I will backtrack and get the uh, Season 1, 3, and 4 in there. We'll see. But right now we're going to start with The Fiery Cross. This has always been my favorite book in the Outlander series, and we are going to compare it with Episode 1 of Season 5, The Fiery Cross. So let's do this. If you haven't watched the episode or want to read the books, beware, there are spoilers coming, so you've been warned. Our season premiere episode is quite different than the novel version. Now, with our season premiere of the show, I felt like there was maybe a bit too many things in the episode that I could maybe have taken place over two episodes, and I felt like the very opening with Murtaugh with little boy Jamie was maybe like unnecessary. If you've been watching the show, especially the first two seasons, I think we all know that Murtaugh loves Jamie. So I don't think we need a flashback to just see, you know, little Jamie right after his mother passes away and, you know, Murtaugh giving him his word to protect him and look out for him. In the novel, we have a gathering, a Scottish gathering, and it is actually not taking place at Fraser's Ridge. In our show, they set it at Fraser's Ridge, and the beginning main focus is Brie and Roger's wedding. Well, Brie and Roger's wedding is also a focus point in the book at the gathering. There is also the focus point of Jocasta and Duncan's wedding also at the gathering. Now, with Jocasta's story, the TV series took it in quite a different direction while they put her and Murtaugh together. And you see some of that in season four, which maybe we'll come back to uh, soon. But in the book, Murtaugh has long been dead because he died at the Battle of Culloden. So I think they kept Murtaugh around because how cool is he? I mean, yeah, he was awesome. So I think the fans probably just loved his character, and so in the TV version they decided we need to keep him going. So the show puts Jocasta and Murtaugh together, and in our episode one, we hear Jocasta say that Duncan Innes has proposed marriage, but she hasn't given him answer yet, meaning she is waiting to see what Murtaugh will do or say. And you start to see Murtaugh you know, considering, but he realizes he has a duty to the regulators and he is going to follow that course. So he tells Jocasta that he's not going to stand in the way of her happiness. And so that brings back our novel storyline of Jocasta and Duncan. In our novel, both Bree and Roger, as well as Duncan and Jocasta, are going to be married by the same priest at the gathering. But something happens, and the priest gets arrested. And they're wondering, what? What is this about? So they kind of narrow it down and figure out, well, it can't have anything to do with Bree and Roger getting married. I mean, who would want to keep them apart? So they think maybe it has to do with blackmail, or maybe it has to do with Jocasta and Duncan. But they don't know if they're right or what actually is happening at this point in our story. Something that happens in the novel that is not mentioned in the show at all is Team Claire and Jamie use their strengths to finagle themselves into getting a meeting with the captive priest. And they sneak Wee Jemmy in, as well as Marceline and Fergus's two kids, Jermaine and Joan, to get baptized by the priest. And it's, it's really funny, but also it's really beautiful because you, you start to really see how Marsley feels about Claire as a mother because one of Joan's middle names is Claire. And so it's a really beautiful moment and Claire is really touched by that. Now with the addition of keeping Murtaugh alive in our TV series, they also gave him an occupation as a silversmith. 
Roger wants to give Brie a ring for their wedding. Now, in our book, Roger's, he's broke. And so he goes around the gathering because people from all over bring their wares and he buys a cheap ring. And he says, you know what? If it turns her finger green, I don't care. In our show, we actually have Murtaugh making a really beautiful ring. And Roger's kind of taken aback that it's such a high quality because, you know, he, di he didn't think he could afford it. But you see how Murtaugh, who we already know loves Jamie like a son, starts to treat Brie also like a daughter or granddaughter to him. So that's really beautiful that they have Murtaugh making a beautiful ring for Brie. In our show, Governor Tryon actually appears at Brie and Roger's wedding. And you can see as Jamie's walking Brie down the aisle that he's taken aback. In our novel, Tryon doesn't come to the gathering, but he does send a letter for Jamie to raise a militia. And the person who delivers that actually is named Archie Hayes. And it's, it's just a very cool little side story. You find out that Archie Hayes actually knew Jamie from Culloden. And Jamie doesn't remember a lot of the stuff from the PTSD of the day. So, Jamie says, a great deal happened then. I didn't remember everything, no. And Archie says, your husband's a modest man, Mistress Fraser. Has he never told you what he did that day? There was a good bit of gallantry on the field, Jamie muttered, head bent over the letter, and quite a bit of the reverse. I didn't think he was reading. His eyes were fixed as though he was seeing something else beyond the paper that he held. I there was, Hayes agreed. But it does seem worth remark when a man saved your life, no? And so you find out that this person was saved by Jamie, and so he definitely respects him. And I think that's just a little beautiful addition to the story. In our show version, we have Brie and Roger's wedding going off uninterrupted. In our novel, because the priest has been arrested, Roger goes off and he finds the Presbyterian minister, Reverend Caldwell, being Presbyterian himself, like Reverend Wakefield, his adopted father, and he arranges that he will do the service. You get a little inkling of this in the show that Jamie is upset that Bree's not being married Catholic, and you see just Claire roll her eyes at this. But Bree and Roger don't care, and in our novel, they figure, hey, if I can't get married by the priest, we might as well get married by the reverend. Why not? We're all Christians and we love each other. So there's a little more tension between Roger and Jamie. Something that happens in both our book as well as our show is the calling of the men. And this kind of harkens back to in season one, where we have the calling of the clan at Castle Leoc for the clan Mackenzie and they put Jamie between a rock and a hard place because he's a Fraser, even though he has some Mackenzie blood in him, and it's like, oh, okay, are you gonna be with me as a Mackenzie or are you gonna go against me? And of course, Jamie, our hero, handles it beautifully. Now, in our book version, the calling of the men is still happening at the gathering, which is not at Fraser's Ridge, but our fiery cross is at Fraser's Ridge. Now, our show combines these two things, the calling of the men and the fiery cross, into one night. And Jamie knows from Claire, as well as Brie and Roger, that the American Revolution is gonna happen pretty soon. So he decides that he needs to do this to earn the respect of the men and all the people who live on the ridge. So because they're not in the same clan, he is trying to just gain their loyalty to him. To create some extra tension and to show that Roger and Jamie are not on the same wavelength, as Jamie is around the fiery cross giving his speech, he, he looks straight at Roger and it's implied that he wants Roger to come forward first and pledge his oath. And what do we have right next to him? We have Isaiah Morton who you may not have noticed, his, caught his name, uh, but he appears later down the road. And he shows Roger up by coming forward first. Because Roger is very nervous and he's afraid and he knows what's coming in the war and he's not a warrior. He's a historian, he's a scholar. So he definitely is afraid to give his oath to Jamie. 
But then Jamie calls him out by name, and he swallows all those feelings, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna go do this. And Jamie says, okay, repeat these words. And Roger just says the words. He knows them because he's a historian. Jamie also springs on him. You're gonna be Captain Roger McKenzie. And Roger's totally floored by that. In our novel, uh, we have Jamie bequeathing the title of Captain upon Roger at the gathering so that Roger can go around and talk to the men as Captain. A few more things from the season premiere and the Fiery Cross. We do meet Josiah Beardsley, the hunter, who is about age 14. And our show actually adds in a character, Lieutenant Knox. He's one of Tryon's men that uh, Tryon sends to kind of stay there at the ridge while Jamie prepares and prepares men to go hunt down Murtaugh. And with that, we have our season premiere ending with Jamie saying, you know what, you can give up your oath, but Murtaugh, go hide yourself. Be gone, be hard to find. And that's how our episode ends. I do feel like they could have ended the season premiere a little earlier with our last shot of Claire and Jamie up on the ridge and there's a second fiery cross. Because in our novel, there's only the one fiery cross. They burn it when they're going to war. Well, in our show, we actually started with one fiery cross and then Jamie says, we'll burn it again when we go off to war. So there, this idea of there's going to be two fiery crosses. I don't know when that's going to be. I don't know if that's going to be the very last episode. Don't know. But I feel like they could have just ended the show with Jamie and Claire standing by the unburnt fiery cross because there was just so many things going on in this episode that it just made it a little overwhelming. I did like the episode, even though sometimes there was just a little too much going on. But one of my favorite, favorite parts was Roger talking to Jocasta. And what Roger says to her is almost verbatim of what is said in the novel. He is so insulted that Jocasta is insinuating that Roger will only love Jemmy because he's gonna be a rich boy when he grows up. He's gonna own River Run. So in the show, right after that sequence, as Roger is mad about what Jocasta just said, they put in that he immediately goes to their cabin and he claims little Jemmy as his own blood. And it's, well, it's the quote of this shirt that Claire and Jamie speak to each other as the Scottish wedding vows. Blood of my blood, bone of my bone. And it's a really beautiful moment. So that was definitely a favorite part of mine in the series. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Outlandish Comparison. Today we looked at Outlander Season 5, Episode 1, and Fiery Cross, the novel. Please subscribe and turn on notifications, and I'll see you real soon.